Hey, my beautiful angel, it's Jizzy Grouse. Welcome to Soul Awakening channel. Today we are talking about life purpose. I get so many questions. Josie, how do I find out my life's purpose? What am I here to do? I have so many options. There's so many things that I'm interested in, but how do I know that I'm here, that I have a destiny, that I have purpose that my life has meaning and this video will answer a lot of these questions what i know for sure for over a decade of spiritual work that you have a destiny you have purpose you are here because your soul has collaborated with a lot of people has collaborated on a lot of many different dimensions to manifest you and you're not a random event you are not here by accident you are certainly on a path to your destiny i am also asked Josie you know do we really have free will do we have a chance to create or we live in the universe where everything is predestined. So we will answer that question as well. On the soul level, there's a different, there are different laws that play on the level of your soul. We expect the soul world to look exactly like the physical manifestation, but it's not. And the laws through which the soul incarnates are not the same laws that we are here to manifest. So let's look into um, the matrix of creation and how you can use these pointers that exist in your birth chart, in your numerology, and also in your talents, looking at your abilities, your gifts that you already have, that you have developed over lifetimes. And this is really, really an important topic because your soul's purpose brings meaning. Please understand this very important concept. Your soul brings meaning to what you do, to your life, day after day after day if you don't feel like you have meaning you know you're just like a robot you wake up you go through your day by the end of the day it's just all the same things if you law if you're lost if you don't know what you're living for it just is there a purpose for me if you are searching for these answers is because you have disconnected yourself from your soul meanings the higher meanings are the domain of the soul. They're not of the mind. Your mind knows only what is and what was. Your mind is a recording studio of all of your memories. Everything that you have built up to this point of your life journey, that's your mind. So when you ask in your mind, what am I here to do? It's going to give you a lot of different possibilities based on what it knows that you would likely to be successful at or what you may like in the future. So these preferences come from your mind and they're not often meaningful. They may give you joy in the moment. They may give you some sort of satisfaction right here and right now, but they will not bring meaning. You're not going to sit down at the end of the day I feel like, oh my God, I am so fulfilled on the inside. And that's what we want to understand, that meanings are the domain of the soul. Not trying to create from the mind, but we want to bring awareness into the present moment and we want to connect with the soul. So I have four steps for you that will help you to identify your life purpose. So... Your soul having a physical experience on planet Earth. You are a soul having a physical experience on planet Earth. Everything you think about yourself that you know about yourself is a made up concept based on your previous experiences. But the truth of who you are is not physical. And it's not only not physical. It's eternal. 
It has eternity. It has unlimited potential. That's who you truly are. And if you feel like you're limited, it's again because you have disconnected yourself from the soul. So your journey in life, if you are in the presence of people inspiring to you and also being able to do the work required for you to go back to the soul and the work of communicating with the soul is the most liberating most enjoyable, most fulfilling path that you can choose. Now, the older you get, the less connected to the soul, to your spiritual essence you become. You can meditate all day. You can talk to the angels. But still, at the end of the day, you don't have meaning to your life. If you lost, you feel disconnected. You have not communicated. You have not connected with the soul because the soulful work is coming from shifting your awareness, okay? From shifting your perspective and seeing the world as through the eyes of your soul, okay? Through the eyes of your soul. And your soul has profound insights for you. Without the soul, you cannot really tap into the vast universe of meanings. Understand? Okay. Number one, soul can give you clues. And these clues you can find in your birth chart and in your um, numerology chart. And you can actually do some self-reflection to help you to do just that. So find out your life path number. Your life path contains a path by adding all the numbers of your birth, you will end up with one digit. If you have two digit, digits, simplify to a single digit, reduce it to a single digit. And this is your life path. I have done lots of videos on numerology. These numerology points are important. <laughs> they are giving you an idea which path your soul has chosen. Numerology is the language of the universe. It's a frequency. If your soul is born into the frequency of number five, there is a message about it. There is a specific information that you need to understand about that path. So watch the workshop on the non-numerology and life path. I will link it below. Now, uh, so that's number, um, that's number of your life path gives you an idea what frequency your soul was chosen was has been born into okay and it gives you a sense of vibration it, it gives you a sense of understanding if you're number one you know you will always be ahead of the train you'll always be running faster than everyone else and you'll feel sometimes isolated because well no one can keep up with you and of course because you're number one so these kinds of moments and ideas, they are really, really important. Number two, your soul's path. Your soul's path may not be the path of logic, okay? Or the path where you can say, okay, if I follow this path, I will, I will become a millionaire. If I follow the soul's path, it means that I will become successful in every dimension of life. I will have fulfilling relationships and I'll have a million dollar mansion and I will have the abundance of friends. The soul's path is the path that you have, that you need it. Your soul will choose or make a choice. And the reason for your soul to follow that path is because it is learning. It's on the path of learning. And the soul's mantra is this, lessons that are not learned will be repeated. Let me say this one more time. Lessons that are not learned will be repeated. And you can have for eternity to learn, rinse and repeat until you learn. And then these lessons are no longer necessary. So your soul's path is here because it has chosen a certain path. There are people whose soul's path is to 
become monks in Himalayan mountains. There are people who life, whose life's path are to be a mother and bring all of that loving, compassionate, generous energy, feminine loving spirit or spirit of nurturance into a relationship, into, um, into family dynamics, into community. This could be it. So the soul's path is the soul's unique path. What gives your soul your path meaning? What gives your life meaning? Okay, if you, if you ever experienced, let's say, you wanted to become uh, an interior designer, for example, but your family insisted, insisted that you take computer programming, that you become a computer engineer. And then for the rest of your life, you may have been so successful and you had, you know, a decent career and lots of friends. But at the end of the day, you sit down and you feel this sense of emptiness. There's no meaning to what you do. Everything else looks really nice, shiny on the surface, but it doesn't have any personal satisfaction, meaning. The soul likes meaning. If what you do does not have meaning, it's not your soul's path. So it's not that you have to just drop it all and then become an interior designer, but you have to ask your soul. You have to be very, very observant and listen to the subtle clues that your soul is telling you. Okay, you're not happy. Your relationship is not meaningful to you. The life that you have is not meaningful. The school that you go to, you lost meaning. It's not that you have to drop the school, leave your husband, and then leave it all behind. So you can now become the soulful individual. It's what can you do to make your life meaningful? Meaning is the domain of the soul. This is the soul's meaning. It's an emotion. It's an experience. It's all of your presence. When meaning, when the loss, when the loss of meaning happens, people lose their life. People lose the will. And will to live in itself, what keeps you going, is your going, is your will, is your will here to be in this moment, the soul, without meaning. It's, it's an empty space. It's void. The meaning has to be there. Without meaning, it's a withering kind of path. So seek what your soul wants. One of the ways that you can find out what your soul wants is to go and then check out your birth chart. There are something called, there's, there are two things that will help you to see where the soul, the path that the soul has chosen. These are lunar nodes. The northern node, the north node, north node, look into that. That's your soul's purpose. That, that is very related, not to the work that you do, not on that career path. It's what your soul wanted you to do. That's where the soul is going to lead you for the rest of your life's journey. You will always have these detours and then soul is taking you right back. It's just you, you, you try this, this, this interesting something and then didn't work out. The soul is going to bring you right back. So your soul, it's like it, it always pulls you from wherever you are. Even if you're not on a soulful path, the happiness or lack of happiness is going to make you want to go back to your own soul's path. So North Node is going to give you an idea of what the soul has chosen. Look at the specific sign of your, of your North Node and also look at the house. Okay. <clears throat> Which house? And which sign is your north node? That's going to give you some really good sense of where the soul's where the soul's attention is in this lifetime. Now let's look at number three because this is really really important. When it comes to soul, remember that soul does not have one lifetime. So your soul has a continuum. 
And your experience here didn't start here. It started God knows when. It started God knows when. And you're being here, you have no idea what you, it's like you're, you have these karmic events that happen to you. You meet people, it's just like you settling the score with them in this lifetime. And it's so, it's so funny because there are certain people with whom life just, just brings you two together, whether it's a personal relationship, a work relationship, friendship, or you can be just fierce enemies. <laughs> and that's like, this is so funny. Why these people, if you just remove all of these roles and you ask why these events, these relationships appear in my life, what am I here? Why am I experiencing that? Then the, the short answer is karma, something to do with your connection with these people in the past. And the subject of karma is it's so diverse, okay? Just to make it super simple. It's not just, it's not as simple, by the way, saying, okay, you know, you hurt me in the past life, in this lifetime, I have to hurt you. It's not like that. There are certain consequences of these energies. Whatever imbalance was created, it has to be brought into that neutrality point because that's what nature does, bringing things into balance. Now, your karma, things that happen to you, and karma can be, again, uh, is a, it's not a good or bad thing, but it's there are some com sort of implications of karmic events that you may see as negative, right? There are certain implications of karma that are that you see as positive. That's just the way it is, not good or bad. There are just, there are things that you perceive them as. Now, karma is where you can learn about you. And that's where you say, you know, where's my free will? And when it comes to karma, your free will only in your choosing to react or not to react to circumstances, to people, events. When a karmic event happens, which means you're triggered on the inside, you choose not to react. Lessons that are not learned will be repeated. The law of life. Lessons that are not learned will be repeated. Lessons that are not learned will be repeated. That's why you are here and there is something called karma. And if you look again at your astrology chart, the south node, okay, that's your karma. The south node is, is the baggage that you brought into this lifetime. And understanding your karma, just at least understand it. Take a moment and look at these events and look at your north node. Look at the sign. Look at the house. Look at adjacent planets. If you are not into astrology, find an astrologer. Let them read your chart and explain to you specific nuances of your nodes and how these two things are coming together. The North Node, that's your dharma. That's your purpose, the soul's purpose. The South Node is your karma. These are the things and the burdens and challenges, lessons, let's just call them that. They're lessons. And the only choice you have, if you can, you can deal with karma for the rest of your life because lessons are not learned will be repeated. And when you're dealing with a certain event, a person, a circumstance, and you're reactive, you're not learning, okay? Because you are not, again, there's no awareness. There is no pause, there's no momentum that helps you to, to reset, to help you to reset, to help you to reset. One of the things that I do as, as let's say, a soul healer is I reset. I press the reset button. And this has been the most extraordinary healing experience for people because, in essence, that pause, the moment, can change everything. You know, when I was working as a nurse, I was an emergency room nurse for the majority of my career as, as, as a nurse. Uh, and 
we had defibrillators. The machine that is designed, you know, like one of those handles that you press on the chest and you say clear and then shock to do clear shock to do and especially when you see a movie and you see there's someone like a flat line on the monitor and the doctor yells out come on let's let's shock them that's not exactly how it works because heart is an electric device i'm just i'm just sidetracking a little bit but just to give you an example when someone in, in a very dangerous situation, when somebody's heart is an electric device, there's a medical condition, it goes out of order. Instead of beating to dip, to dip, to dip, right? It just goes. So that rhythm, okay, there's two kinds of rhythms. When this goes, when the line goes from this stable, predictable line, it goes to all over the place, rising and falling, that's when somebody needs a defibrillator, okay? And defibrillator, what it does, it stops the heart. When somebody gets a shock, bam, the stop, the stop that happens resets the heart. It resets the heart's rhythm. And the heart, you know, awakens and says, Oh, what happened? Oh, I remember. Oh, I remember how to beat. Love dub, love dub, love dub, love dub. So when there's a flat line, there's no electric activity. You can shock and then put everything on the patient, but it's not going to help. But when there is this chaotic activity of the heart, the only thing that helps this time is to stop the heart from doing this in the same way when the soul is stuck in the patterns of karma sometimes when you throughout throughout your life you have experienced so much you are overwhelmed physically emotionally psychically it's like this it's like you don't even listen to your soul you can't even hear your soul it's just like all of these chaotic patterns are happening, but there is a moment of pause and reset when you just and everything stops. And at this moment, you're nothing, nobody, no person, no presence in this world. You just, it's like you disappear from this planet for just a little bit. And then you come back and then your soul remembers, well, my life's, my soul's purpose is this. And now the soul awakens in you and the soul begins to drive your, you know, your feelings, your thoughts. Now you feel empowered from within. Sometimes that soul awakening happens when there is such a deep traumatic event or where something happens that is so out of, out of ordinary then you feel like, okay, you know, and people who do like extreme things, sometimes what they do is they go and they, let's say, jump into a cold lake, all right? Or spend some, you know, in nature, in extreme conditions. It's because they want to get to the point of reset. They want to stop whatever is going on in their lives. They want to stop, shock it, stop. And then the soul awakens. And when the soul awakens, it's like you are born again. Okay, all of the programs and conditions, conditional things that disappear, they become less and less relevant. And the voice, the chatter in your head, it just now goes back to the back of your existence. Because in the front, on that, on, in that, in essence, the primary driving force now is the soul. Okay, it's the soulful energy. So karma, that's what it is. And if you're stuck in these cycles, in the karmic cycles on and off, the moment you pause and you're no longer reacting to that destructive relationship, to, um, to your own, whether it's blame, shame, um, jealousy, whether there's any of these emotions that bring out some you know, some, some emotion, there is a low frequency emotion that is the 
something that is more disintegrating than building your spirit that is not helping you to create or become inspired not coming from a place of generosity it's a constrictive kind of feeling it does not mean by the way that you have to tolerate abusive relationships maybe the soul power in you will say enough 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 <laughs> enough and that's the soul power that's no longer you hiding or not speaking, just enough. And it comes from the such power of your spirit. It shakes the universe. When soul speaks, when you are awakening the soul power, everything else that is just a clutter or that chatter of the mind, it just subsides. The power of the spirit is the power of your eternal self your most creative self everything else that is conditional that is temporary that is you know not uh that's based on the ego self that only looks big but in essence it's a little tiny little voice just goes away in the presence of your soul in the presence of your spirit so uh, understand that part of your life journey and soul's path is to clear out karma Okay, clear out your karma, clear out your karma. And that's one of the pathways to, uh, to commun connect to the soul. Understand also that karma takes away your energy. You have to do both. You have to follow the soul's path and you have to follow and you have to take care of the karma. If there's too much karma, karma, karma burns energy. It demands so much of your power and so, so much more of your energy. You could have been, you know, doing so many more things with your creative gifts. But because you are stuck in these karmic cycles, they take away your mind, your, your energy, your focus, your attention, and you understand once you free some of these patterns, then karma has a little less effect on you. Okay. And you have more energy, more free energy to create. Okay. And finally, how do you know your life's purpose? Well, your soul, unlike the ego, has no self-interest. It's not identified with things, okay? And it's not concerned with time because for the soul to create a body like you and I have right now, your soul sometimes thinks, I would rather just leave this body and create a new one, okay? This is not, nothing is happening here. The person is just not, it's not awakening. Nothing is awakening. Yes, there's, they're still alive physically, but emotionally, spiritually, they're dead. Nothing is meaningful, but they're, they're just consumed. And then they're, they're in this, this physical reality and they're running the program and they will run the program for the rest of their lives. And that's when the soul can say, I'm done. I'm done with this life. I would much rather actually go ahead and create some other opportunity. So this may happen, but the soul understand that one of the soul's desires is to give, okay? Is the giving quality, the generosity, gratitude. Now, these are not just empty words, but they are, they aren't empty words, but they're the words that we sometimes in our world, we lose, we feel like they're not important. Everybody's grateful. But when you understand that soul energy, soul is operating, soul operates on a certain frequency. It's a different world of the soul. So when you feel grateful, when your heart is open, when you feel healed, what do you want to do? You just want to love. And I've done thousands of soul readings. And let me tell you, there's no soul at the end of the day who does who says, well, my, my, my purpose is to, by the end of the year, is to get a new sports car. There's no soul who would say that. There's nothing wrong with the sports car. But on the soul level, these things, it's like, how can I 
bring more energy? How can I share? Because souls, the soul in me sees the soul in you. The soul in me is the same soul as in you. The same soul in you and me is the same soul as in the sun. The same soul is in the sun, is in you, and is in me, is in is the entire universe, is this soul. So the soul understands that it's not separate from anything. The soul is here to play its role. And for the soul is the path of maximal, maximal giving. What in this lifetime you can give the most? That is your soul. That's what your soul wants. And now, let's say you have a beautiful voice and you're here to make so many people happy. You can give to a lot of people with that gift of your voice. That's what the soul would want. The soul would want to use certain gifts in you, your strength, your potential, to give to as many people, okay? That's why, you know, when you're on the right track, you feel inspired. You feel like you're doing what you were meant here to do. And now your gifts serve the maximum number of people on this planet. We are all on planet Earth at this point. So understand that that's exactly what happens when you are doing the work that you can do for the longest time. It means that you can do something for the rest of your life and enjoy it, that you have energy, that you have motivation, and that job, that work gives you meaning, that activity gives you meaning. Then it means that you can do it long enough so this work benefits the maximum number of people. And that's how it works. Whether you have a purpose that, that is around, let's say, as a healer, okay? You can, you can have that purpose and you genuinely feel like, okay, these healing gifts, that's my gift to the world. And I can, I get empowered and then I can serve as many people as I can. Some people are really good with finances and they can really, they are on this planet to use their analytical abilities and strategies to create the most financial possibilities as that's how, that's how they give. Any sort of business in essence is a service, okay? How many people you can serve with this? So whatever you have that you can bless the world and you can give the most is exactly what your soul is here to do. All right, you guys, I hope this was helpful and I really, really want you to find your life's purpose. All right, be well, be blessed in the comments below. Let me know um, some of the thoughts that you have about your life's purpose, how your life's purpose is unfolding. Check out the astrology and um, let me know what lessons you have learned from this video. I can't wait to hear your stories. Be well, be blessed. I'll chat with you in the next video.